In this video, we'll be going over the basic user interface of Nuke Studio, as well as talk about some project settings. So here's a sneak peek of the project we'll be building up in the Nuke Studio timeline. You can see it's a mix of live action with CG, as well as some visual effects. While we won't be seeing this project through to the final deliverable stage, we will be learning how you can fit Nuke Studio into your production pipeline. Let's get started. Going over the basic user interface, Great thing about Nuke Studio is that you can kind of customize the layout or the workspace that you're working with to fit however you need. Meaning I can take these windows or these panels and then expand them or collapse them horizontally, or vertically. Even take, um, let's say, we'll pop open another clip here. So in the viewer, I can take this clip, I can float it if I want, have a floating window, or just drag it to another panel. So we have a viewer over there for a clip, and then we have our timeline viewer here. You can even split the window itself from within it. If I see the orange dotted line, if I take this to the side over here, split it just like that. Jump back to our timeline here. And then we can even add windows in here as well. So if I add this window, right click on there, and then go to, let's like, say, script editor. And I have this custom layout. If I want to save my custom layout, so that way I don't have to reset it again, just go to workspace, save your workspace give it a name maybe assign it a shortcut if you like and hit okay i'm going to cancel that myself among some of the other workspaces here we have informing or you can also press shift f1 on the keyboard conforming workspace brings in our spreadsheet for us spreadsheet is great and it's very powerful because it works alongside whatever you see in the timeline so if i select something from the spreadsheet it's also going to select it right here in our timeline as well as you can see it right there and vice versa. So if I were to select this from here, it's going to be selected in our spreadsheet. The great thing about the spreadsheet is you can select multiple items or clips at once and make batch changes across all of them. So if I were to change this to say 150 for speed, they all change to 150 there. Let me just undo that and go back to 100. There we are. Another workspace in here is editing. Editing is basically going to allow us to have our clip that we're working with from our bins over here and being able to view our sequence timelines. So that way we can see where we want to cut this clip into our sequence. Review gives us a histogram and waveform of the clip we're currently looking at. Timelines more viewer centric, really opening up the viewer for us while still maintaining the timeline right below it. Now finishing, this was one I started with my default. And then finally, compositing. It's going to jump us into the new compositing node graph you might be familiar with. That's a great thing about Nuke Studio is you can go directly from the timeline, sequence timeline, jump right into the node graph if you need to. So let's put us back to finishing. With any of these panels or panes that you might be viewing, if you press the space bar, it's going to full screen it for you. So while my mouse is hovering over the viewer, space bar, full screen get out of that spacebar again. So I'm going to do that for the project panel while we talk about that. So over here on the left side of the project panel, we have our project. So if I collapse this, we have just the main project. Now if I expand it, it's going to show us what's inside of our project. We have a few uh, footage folders that we can see here, and we also have a sequence as well. If I want to see everything that's in it, just make sure I have the main project selected. It's going to show me everything that's contained within that project. Just above the project right here on this little icon A to Z, this just allows you to sort your project items alphabetically. You can do ascending or descending order. Or if you prefer, if you click and hold, or if you just click this once, it'll toggle to the manual mode. If I click and hold, you can select manual mode. Manual just basically allows you to take these project items and rearrange them however you prefer. Move that down there. So rather than being alphabetical, it's where I want it to be. I'm gonna switch this back by name level. Same thing on this side when it goes for our footage and our bin folders. We can sort alphabetically ascending or descending orders. But we also have a few other options when I click and hold this. Also we have color. Color doesn't refer to color space of the items. It's going to refer to some of the color coding that we might do later on. We do duration, range per second, name, resolution, start time code, and type. And these icons here are just going to adjust how your thumbnails are displayed. So right now it's 
display as the thumbnail with the information below it. If I click this, it's still thumbnail view with information to the right of it. And then this is more like a spreadsheet view where you're not going to get the thumbnail, but you'll just get a breakdown of the clip names and then the clip information. These thumbnails can be scaled up or down by using the slider here. Let's scale these up, better visibility. Just know that if you were to say go to the robot one, you can see it's scaled back down it's because the scale position is retained depending on where you left it at last. I'm going to scale this up here, go to conform, scale this way up, and then we'll go back to robot. We'll see it's still retained that scaling information of where I left it at. So I'm going to jump back out of there. Right below this project panel is our timeline, our sequence pane, basically. So of course, this is where you're going to bring in your clips and edit them together in chronological order, maybe add some uh, timeline effects to it and do some blending between the tracks, really set that up. We also have the ability to do timeline disk caching. This is right here. You can set, see by this orange icon and this orange timeline on the viewer that this entire sequence has been cached to disk meaning that it's taken all these tracks and what might be below it, kind of just flattened it out to give us a single you know, EXR view in here. So that way we can play it back faster. If for any reason your machine doesn't have, say, enough RAM to stay ahead of the playhead, RAM is this white line here. So if you run into a situation where it's not playing back at you know, full speed, um, you might want to kind of consider using timeline disk caching to cache your entire sequence to disk there and get better playback. To the left of the timeline is the sequence properties. So you can see it's currently set for an output resolution of 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 25 frames per second. If I were to go to the metadata, it won't show up unless I actually have something selected. So I'll select a clip there in the timeline, and then I'll get some metadata information as well as the properties for that clip. So by default, that's currently set to reformat any kind of footage I drop in here to the sequence resolution, which was this right here. So this means I can drop in HD, 4K, 8K, whatever it might be, and it's gonna automatically kind of just reformat that for us to the sequence resolution. And that's gonna be determined by, say, whatever you set the resize type to. Up here to the right is our properties panel. So this could be properties for either anything I double click in the timeline down here. It's gonna open up the properties for that particular clip. Or I can click it from the bin over here and then we'll get the properties for that as well, loaded into our properties panel. And then finally, that brings us to our viewer. So in our viewer here, I'm gonna full screen this, the space bar, remember? So currently I'm just looking at the clip that was in the bin here that I double clicked. I have a quite a few different viewers open here, so this was another clip that was open. And if I actually wanna see my timeline view, or my sequence timeline, I'm gonna to go to the actual sequence for that. And I can see the entire sequence rather than just the clips I have open. And close these down because we don't need those open. Let me just take a look at our sequence. So the player controls are right below the timeline here. Play forward is L, play backwards is J, and the stop is K. Now if I press L on the keyboard, you'll see it begins to play forward. If I press L again, it's two times the speed. Press L again, it's four times the speed. So I can keep pressing L up to 32 times the speed, and it's going to play forward that. Press K to stop. Now if I press J on the keyboard to play backwards, I can do the same thing. Press it a few times all the way up to 32 speed. Stop that K again. So I can jump between clips by either pressing this arrow key to the left or to the right, or using my arrow keys on the keyboard by using up or down to jump between the clips. Jump to the home or the end of the sequence, pressing end here or the beginning here, or home or end on the keyboard. And then I can set in and out points by pressing I button here or I on the keyboard. Set my out point by pressing O on here or O on the keyboard. If I want to clear those, I can either remove it here or set it back to lock. If I want to clear that out of there, press Alt U on the keyboard and it'll clear my in and out points for me. If I want to set my in and out points to my selected clip, I can hit Shift U. I'll set it there. Let's get an Alt U to clear those out. I can choose to display my timeline in frames or by time code by selecting this here is also being able to select it through here as well. Jump it back into the viewer. I can tell it what particular time code I want to be at. Frame right here by typing that in. I want to do a frame. Set it to like say frame 400. We'll just type that in here. Jump me to 400. Up here at the top we have our gamma and gain controllers. 
So if we, this will be our gain right here. I'm gonna bring this down. Just note that this is only affecting the viewer. It's not actually changing the gain of the clip itself. This is just for the viewer. Let me change that around too. Right here, we'll have our overlays for safe zones. We do title save, action save format, center, or just the format itself, as well as masking. So I can play it by frame masking to say square. We have currently set at half opacity. If you want to do full opacity to kind of block out the edges there, that's what. Take that back to none. And we have our exposure warning level lines. If you want to clip out, turn that on to, if there's anything clipping, you'll be able to see it as zebra stripes. See if there's anything in here. It doesn't look like it. Okay, we're good to go there. Next up, we have our annotate tool, which we'll talk about in another video. This just basically allows you to draw annotations on screen during either review or if you're setting up shots to pass out to comp artists. That's a pretty handy feature. We have a region of interest tool. You might be able to turn that on, draw a region of interest. That way it only processes what's in the region of interest rather than processing the entire frame. And this will pause our viewer. And then we can just set our zoom level here manually or by pressing plus or minus on the keyboard or by zooming in with the mouse wheel. You press H, it goes to the, fits the whole screen here. That will fit everything so that we can see the entire frame or frame before you. And then we have our proxy viewer here. So if we want to view at this at a lower resolution, to kind of speed it up if you're working with heavy files that's one way to go about it set that to auto so that way when i zoom out it's going to automatically set it to the right proxy setting for that all right so let's move on to project settings we'll go over that real quick project settings can be found under the project menu here at the top if it's grayed out like this and you can't access it then what you need to do is make sure you have the project actually selected click on that and then you can click back to project settings and edit settings here we have in our general tab just the name of the project. So whatever you might have saved it as, you can go to project save as. This can be the name of that file. And this will be the directory of where you saved it to. So poster frame is going to apply to whenever you import footage into your project, whether it's going to display the first, middle, last frame of that clip, or any custom frame offset for that. The purpose of this is being is say maybe you have a bunch of clips loaded in here and all they have is the slate information on it, but you'd rather see the context of it. Then that'd be a situation where you'd want to maybe set to middle, last, or a custom frame for that. Your sequence is going to be what the sequence output is going to be for resolution, your frame rate, and how you're going to if you're going to reformat clips by default when you import them, and then the clip reformat type. Go to views. Basically, if you're working with stereo footage, you want to set that up for stereo. If you're working with say VR with multiple camera setups, you want to add cameras for that particular however many you might have. Under color management, you can set your default color transforms as well as the type of color management you want to use, whether it's Nuke's built-in one or OCIO, or you can even load in your own custom LUT if you have something to load in there as well. I'll set this back to Nuke default. Under red footage, you can get the default video decode mode, whether you want it full premium or down to the 16th of it when working with those heavy red files. And then finally export. So this is going to be your default export structure. We'll get a little bit more into exporting uh, towards the end of the video series. So for now, we'll just leave this here and we'll circle back around to it once more applicable. All right, so that'll do it for the basic user interface and project settings. In the next video, we'll be talking about onlining or conforming media using an EDL, XML, or AAF.